feel like we've talked about so many of the obvious guys this year, but Jesse's been on the roster all season, kind of grinding for that opportunity that, that has come the last couple of weeks. Maybe not, not too impressive with debut, but it seemed like the, the jump from week one to week two for him was significant. Where, where have you seen him grow over the course of the, the season? Absolutely. Jesse, man, I just told him in a mean to, to his face, I'm very impressed and pleased with, with his growth, his, um, his dependability, to be honest, because when you start to get to guys like Jesse and call a spade a spade on the back end tail of the room, they're doing a lot of practice squad, giving a lot of look reps. And he's been kind of showing things on the look team all year, but that's reading cards and just going and flying around. It's different when you got to put schematic and scheme behind your actions. And he showed in Denver that he was capable of playing stout, controlling tight ends. He showed up in the Denver game. And I was like, oh, okay, we might have something here. And then just pushing him. He's a guy, he has his laid back. I tell him he's, he belongs on the beach because he has his laid back demeanor to him. And he needs to be pushed. And as long as you push him, you hold him accountable, he answers that bell every time. So I'm definitely impressed with, with his growth and development this far. We've asked a few of the defensive coaches just with the challenges you faced the last few weeks. You, you go from you know, Trey Flowers and Romeo Parr, two stable veterans, and then this week you're, you're leaning on Jesse and uh, Charles. 43. Charles and Rashad Berry. Berry. Yep. Like, what is this week? Of, or, Past two weeks of preparation been like for you as a coach that the challenge is presented? Uh, to be honest, it's probably showed me the true essence of coaching. Uh, to, to me, you got guys, and still, there's development to be had with Romeo. Like, and he knows that. I'm on him all the time. I see him in the building. Tell him, I don't care about that foot. You better be working on your strike, your pad leverage. But, but there's still development there. But let's call it space. That's a veteran guy. You know that's played a lot of football in this league. And it's not that hard. It's not as hard and challenging to get those guys prepared for a game. Whereas as a guy that's never took an NFL rep, uh, you tell him, all right, now you got to go play 50 plays against Denver up in Mile High. Instead of his head spinning, he's hit, he comes to me, texts me, asking for extra meeting time. So that's, so that's why I don't put a lot of this on the coaches. This game is about the players. Like, and I've been on both sides of this deal. And of course, like, those guys get paid too. And that's what I tell the guys in the room. Y'all sit in my mean rooms every day just like Romeo does, just like Trey does. Why is it that just because you don't get reps, you don't know knowledgeably what to do? Now, going out and doing it is another thing, and that's time on task, that's reps. And you're seeing with those reps, these guys have gotten better. But that's, you know, you know I give that 99% to the players. What have you learned about Charles Harris this season that's kind of kept him moving in the right direction? Consistent theme since day one. He works his butt off. He, he's, a, he's a guy who came in the league with a lot of expectations, and he knows well as anybody he fell short of those, and that's okay because that, it's a lot of things that go into that for different reasons that I spoke on. Schematic, uh, the feel, the structure of the organization, where they're going directionally, and all, a bunch of different things. And I think you're just witnessing and watching when a guy prepares and works his butt off in the right opportunity when they intersect and interline with each other, you're kind of seeing that in fruition. Have you, have you seen his confidence grow? I mean, Tremendous. for a guy that you know, maybe didn't achieve what he wanted to for three or four years to, to come in here and produce the way he has, I mean, how have you seen that in his, his attitude and his approach? It's, it's night and day, I'll tell you that, as far as his confidence level. Because a lot of things we've asked him to do this year, he hadn't done. You go back and look at his career, tell me how many times has Charles Harris been in coverage the way we put him in coverage. I mean, this guy, coverage, I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people get wrapped up in the sacks, and I, I take my hat off to him. The sacks are beautiful. I love him as an OLB coach. But you watch his stuff in the run game and pass coverage. The past couple of weeks, it is outstanding. I mean, he's dropping in cover, seeing routes, seeing the routes develop and doing. That takes a lot of work. That's not something you could just wake up and go do what he's doing. So people, I think, getting caught up in his numbers, which are outstanding. The game he just played is one of the best games I've seen played by a teammate, by another comrade around the league or anything of an edge player to have the stats that he had. But I tell people, don't get caught up in – Go watch the tape and look what this guy is really doing in the run and pass coverage-wise in the game. It's freaking impressive. And I was, I was just curious, going back to the, the comment you made to Romeo about you got to keep working. What, what can he legitimately be doing right now in terms of mental drills that, that can make him sharper for when he does come back? 
to be honest, the main thing for Romeo is to get healthy right now. He's still kind of early on in that deal that he had. But as far as football-wise, it's all above the neck. It's all mental. And Rome, you know, I was just talking to some people in the hall. I said, Rome, like, he's still in the building. That's because of the culture that's been established here. Guys aren't getting hurt and running off to these, to L.A. and Miami that you typically see, especially in cold weather cities, just talking real, and that's the way I talk. So you see guys run off when they get hurt, and they're done for the year. All right, I'll see you all in the offseason. That doesn't happen here, and that's all because of top down from Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, the culture they've built here allows me as a coach to have a guy like Romeo popping in my meeting a couple days out the week, sitting in there to where the young guys like Rashad Berry and Jesse, they hear me, and I'm going to be honest, I curse today. I listen, I'm on them constantly. So it's easier for me to have that coaching style when I'm able to do it to Romeo, when I'm able to do it to Trey, when I'm able to do it to Charles Harris and, the, and all those guys. Man, I truly take my hat off to each guy in that room, top to bottom. There, uh, just back on Charles again, you mentioned you, know, you got here and you tried to build up his confidence, trying to find that for him. Um, does the mentality for a player change? I mean, he's now 15 weeks into maybe a career-changing year for him in the NFL. So are there different challenges when you do find that success? And start Absolutely. And that's a great point that you mentioned because then you find that, but now where are you going to go? Are you going to stay stagnant at that level? Are you going to drop and fall? Was it just a couple hot games? Or are you going to continue to rise each week and improve? And that's my deal with Charles. I'm going to be honest. And I'll, and I'll express this. Every single week, I don't care. And his games have been getting better and better. I hope this week is even better. My challenge for him is the same each week. You need to be better than you were the week before. Now, I understand what his stats was, but he knows more than anybody. Today at practice, I will be running behind him in every drill because I expect your level of play. Each week, you should be getting better because if you're not getting better, fellas, it's, it's a cliche. You're getting worse. You do not stay the same, not in the game of football. How, how satisfying is it, is it to see that maybe through the entire group, not just you know Charles or guys at the top? Uh, um, I told the guys this morning in my meeting room, I stood before them and told them as a former player, it's, it's, it's really fulfilling to me as a coach to be able to really play the game through them. When you put in a game plan, you put all this stuff on paper, it's on paper. You have to go out and do it. And when you see your guys, not only just go, to, but you see the work that they put in to do it. Because sometimes you put that work in and you don't get that type of result. But when you see the work that they put in and then you get the result to come out of it, it's one of the most fulfilling things as a coach. Uh, as Charles is looking more to take it down and have more production, yeah. have you seen offenses scheme up differently to help that? Uh, not, uh, some weeks you're starting to see a lot more max protection on first, second down. Now we've ran into a couple of teams that that's what they do offensively anyway. So I wouldn't necessarily say scheme, uh, but if I was playing him at some point, you know, but I hope they don't, but, but you know, but that guy, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, that kid has worked his butt off. Everybody's calling to, what are you, what have you done with him? What if I hold him accountable? He knows my coaching style. At first we had our bumps in the road and you know, he kind of looks at him. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I just said that to you. But now he's at a place to where he's like, I appreciate that. Thank you. I need that. And Jesse's the same way. These guys truly thank you. And for me as a coach, that's all I ever want. I don't want any accolades. I don't want any credit. If my players truly look at me and say, thank you, I've done my job. You say, guys, two more. Hold them accountable. What does that mean exactly? Just truly hold them accountable. Like when people say, just have you, no, within your job, did you strike with leverage? Did you have your hands inside? Did you, yeah, you made the play, but did you go out of your way of the framework of the scheme to do that? Like truly breaking it down. Like, and it takes time now. You can't do this by just scheming through the film. It, but truly holding them accountable is to each man being able to look them in the eyes and have uncomfortable conversations. You think, um, since Charles was in Atlanta, is there any sort of special, I think it's been special for that kid since the day he stepped in his building and put on the Lions helmet. And I'm just telling you, you go back and watch our training camp practices, the tempo he played with, the tenacity he played with. It's all just being showed in the national spotlight now because of the numbers and everything. But this isn't a surprise to me. I've seen this since day one of training camp. I guess I'm specifically this game. No, you, this is the NFL. If you get up and down because you play somewhere, to, that, that, that to me – is a bunch of, like, I'm not about that. You better raise your level of play each week or you're going to get your butt knocked off in this league.
<laughs> I was about to say something. <laughs> <laughs> 